Today I'll be doing a CVT fluid change on my 2016 Honda HRV. Uh, this is a video I've been meaning to put up for a while, I just haven't gotten around to it. So, uh, first things first, uh, the jack, jack stands. I never, uh, never leave the car supported with just the jack. Uh, to get underneath the car, jack point. is right here, this cross member under the engine. So that's the easiest place to get to, to uh, lift the two front wheels off the ground so you can get the jack stands underneath. The jack points right there. And I will also be doing an oil change while I'm down here, but I'm not gonna show that. I'm just gonna focus on the uh, CVT change and the engine is hot I always my dad and grandpa told me so I don't know whether it's the best way to do it or not but it's the way I've always done it I always run the engine and transmission hot I just feel like the uh, fluids empty out a little easier and I will um, take an air gun and blow off the debris before I get started but before I uh, get the air gun and blow all the little grit and grime off the top of the engine, I'm going to take off the uh, intake tube and I'm going to remove this cowl right here. There just these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good for me, I can count. Uh, little clips that you have to pop up and remove and then just pull this cowl out. So I'm going to do that. I bought this clip remover tool from Amazon. Um, it works, but a screwdriver works just fine. So I'm just get that under there. Pop up the tab. And this is really hard to do one-handed. And uh, just pop it out like that. And then repeat that for all the others. And every time I do this, I break at least one of these clips. Uh, so I keep lots of extras on hand. This one, this little tab broke off. You can reuse it, it's not a structural part. It just holds this little plastic piece in place. But I uh, always keep extras on hand. And once that's off, you just push this back slightly, lift it up. You have to get past this little tab for the uh, hood release, and then just pull it forward and set this off to the side. So this is not the stock air intake tube. This is an arts and crafts project. I had some uh, silicone elbows and some aluminum tubing lying around. I didn't want to throw it away, so I made this little thing. Uh, on the, uh, the, the stock intake box, you'd have these two plastic clips right here that you just pop up with either a screwdriver or the little tool that I just used. And, uh, Just pop that out. Okay, so now that we have some of the plastic out of the way, we can see what we're trying to get to a little bit better. Um, the filler for the CVT is right here. So I just take the uh, air hose and blow off any debris that might be around there just to keep just just to prevent anything from falling down in there while we're working on it. So I'm just going to pull that off. It would be great if I actually had some pressure going to my air compressor. Um, and this is not a necessary step. And if you have a shop vac, you can get a, a nozzle down in there and just, uh, just vacuum. like a piece of a plastic coating must have fallen off of this. Yep. Yeah, a little piece of this plastic uh, fell off the battery strap. Not a big deal. Something you don't necessarily want floating around in your transmission. So I'm going 
going to pause this because, again, this is really hard to do on YouTube. Okay, so now I have the uh, area around the transmission fill tube cleaned, and I also uh, cleaned around the uh, oil cap, so I won't get any grit in there. So next, I'm going to get the jack underneath the car. Sorry guys, I know I'm going a little Blair Witch on you, but this is really hard to do. Okay. And anytime I jack up the car, I always use a block of wood between the car and the jack just to give it a little buffer. And just right there, I'm gonna start lifting. I just realized I skipped a step. Always chalk your wheels before you jack up the car. So I have one on either side. Car is up. Put the jack stand in place with the jack point. And pay attention to how many notches you have. So I've got one, two, three. Again, with the counting notches, uh, that's important because when you jack up the back of the car you have to make sure that your jack stands are both at the same height so that the car will be level uh, that's important for draining the CVT fluid and once both jack stands are in place and you have your wheels chopped so the cars will roll back on you you can lower the car from the jack stands and make sure that it rests squarely on the crate Abrupt, but that's what I get for doing this one handed. Okay. I'm just slide the jack right out. And I'm going to um, get my creeper. There are six of these little screws. One, two, three, four, five, six on the other side that I'm going to take out. Okay, so the splash shield is removed. There are five of those little plastic clips. There's one up here and one, two, three, four in the back. Uh, the original clips that were back here were a square with like a plastic Phillips screw. Those are long since broken and I've replaced them with just a regular, um, just a regular clip like these that I buy in bulk either from uh, Napa or off of Amazon. And once the splash shield's out of the way, you can get to the drain bolt. And I'm gonna take a brief pause and I'm gonna go ahead and do the oil while I'm down here, but I'm not gonna show that to you guys. I'm just gonna focus on the CVT fluid change. Okay, so oil change is done. We had a little bit of a rain delay, so I'm going to lift up the back of the car now and get it level. So the jack point for the rear of the car is right there. I just use that little tow hook and then lift the car up. So when the car is resting on the jack stands, remember the front jack stand I had set to three notches, uh, the rear, one, two, three, there we go, counting again. So uh, just to make sure the car is level, when you drain and fill the CVT, it's important that you have the car on a level surface. Um, and there's a check that you have to do when you run the car through all the gears. And we'll do that later. Now I'm going to come around to the front of the car and drain out the CVT fluid. So the drain bolt for the CVT is right there. It's 
a 3 8 inch socket, so you just put your 3 8 inch ratchet right into there and crack it open. And I have made this little, oh, just kind of a little makeshift funnel that I cut. I cut a section out of a uh, uh, oil bottle just so it doesn't splash all over the place. And I'll just kind of sit that in right here. It fits right between the splash guard and the uh, side of the transmission. And just put that down and um, pointing into the oil pan so it doesn't splash all over the place. It still splashes a little bit, but not as much. And always wear gloves because this stuff is pretty nasty. If you haven't had the pleasure of smelling CVT fluid before, it is, it is a delight for the senses. So I'm going to pause this for a second and let it start draining. And just as a side note, I have a little piece of a three quarter inch galvanized pipe that I use as a cheater to help break that um, bolt loose. So there you can see it drains pretty well. I don't open the fill bolt until it gets near the end because it uh, tends to splash a little bit more when you have that. So I let it drain a little bit. Like I said, this stuff smells pretty nasty. Um, and I don't like it to have to clean it up from all over my garage. So we'll let that drain for a second. Um, I have had several Honda technicians tell me that they don't trust the Honda CVT fluid. So I use the Amsoil CVT fluid. Um, I've been using that for over 100,000 miles and it works great. The transmission shifts very smooth. Okay. So now I can hear the uh, kind of glug, glug, glug of the transmission fluid draining. So I'm just going to crack this fill bolt. I'm just going to pull it about halfway out. And you'll see that allows it to drain much more smoothly. And it's not running all over the floor of my garage, which is wonderful. So we'll let that drain and the fill bolt, oh, well, not, it's not even a fill bolt, it's just like a plug, is right there. And we've already cleaned this area up earlier. And then there's a check, which is really hard to get to. So I'll have to find a better angle for the camera. So here's the transmission drain bolt. Uh, and this uh, has a magnet on the end. And this is what you should see. Just a very fine, almost like graphite. Uh, it's, it's just a little bit of clutch material that comes out. And it's better to have it on the magnet than floating around inside the CVT. So just clean that off and always remove the old washer and install a new one. Which again, these I order in bulk off of Amazon. The, uh, the crush washers on Amazon are just as good. I mean, it's same, same aluminum as the genuine Honda and like a third the price. Okay, so the drain bolt is cleaned up, a new washer in place, and you can see the CVT fluid is just, just a little drip coming out of there. So I'm just going to take that funnel down and put the bolt back up. Right there. And that gets torqued to... 36 pound feet. And it's got a crush washer on it, so I'll just tighten it until the uh, I feel the washer give, and then I just check the torque to make sure it's right. Okay, so the bolt is torqued. Everything is cleaned up around there. Uh, that little cheap funnel trick that I use uh, with the old oil bottle really saves a lot of time because if you don't use that, the fluid runs directly behind the splash shield, which is a real pain to clean up. Um, you will have to loosen this bolt right here. This is the check bolt. There's no dipstick for the CVT transmission, so this is how you make sure 
that you have the correct level. You'll have to loosen that. I just had a good shot of it, so I got it. So we will start filling the CVT right there. So I'll get my funnel and you put in three quarts of CVT fluid. Then you run the engine, run it through all the gears, and if uh, and then you add the, the fourth quart. So this is my dedicated CVT funnel. I only use this funnel for CVT fluid, and I keep it locked in my workbench. Before I use it, I take a little compressed air and blow it out just to make sure there's no debris sitting in there, and then I'll start filling it up. Okay, and this is quart three of three. And we'll just pour that in. Okay. Just let that drain for a second. I cleaned up the other. I had a little problem with my oil pan, a little spill. Um, we'll let that drain and then we will get in the car, start it, and we'll let the engine run through all the gears in a second. Um, we've gone three quarts, it's the owner's manual. Uh, the specs for the CVT change uh, 3.7 US quarts for the two wheel drive and 3.5 for the all wheel drive. I'm sorry, no, 3.7. Caught me, caught me lying. I, I don't, I don't ever read this owner's manual. Uh, 3.7 core, 3.5 change, 4.2 for the all-wheel drive, 4.0 change. So we're at three, and we'll probably use up the bulk of this fourth one. Okay, so we'll put the drain bolt, or the drain plug back in place, and then. We'll run the engine through all of its gears, and then we need to open up that little check bolt down there, which you can't see from here. I'll show you guys later. Okay, so with the engine running, try to stay in each position for about five seconds. that check bolt. Okay, so 17 millimeter, I usually use a combination wrench because it's a little tight for a uh, socket to get under here. So right there, and I usually use this little trick to uh, just break it. Okay, and then once you break it, you can just back it out with your hand. And nothing should run out of here now, but that's what you're looking at. And I just had the pan position directly underneath that and then we will add that fourth quart until fluid starts dripping out. And then just listen for when you hear the fluid dripping into the pan. And that's about a half, a little bit more than a half quart. So we'll stop and check. And don't forget to replace the washer on this, uh, this bolt as well. Okay, and I can't, I don't know if I 
it's not gonna it's not gonna show up on yeah there it is I mean it's actually pretty good right there so I'm just gonna add a little bit more and see if we can watch it start weaving out of there Okay, and I can see it, it's like right, it's, just, it's right there, it's just not going to start leaking, so I'm just going to add just a little bit more. Okay, well it's not really showing up on the camera, but I'm getting a few little drops out of there, so I'm going to call it good. I can see the, I can see the CVT fluid uh, co covering the threads in that little check hole. So I'm not gonna waste any more CVT fluid because it's right where it needs to be. Okay, well, it seems like there was just a little bit of a delay because as soon as I went to get down to uh, put the bolt back in, it started dripping out. So that that's what you should get right there. Just a little bit of a trickle, just to make sure that the level in the transmission is where it needs to be. Um, like I said earlier, make sure your jack stands are all the same height so that you know your vehicle's level. Um, that's why it's important to make sure that this level in the transmission is correct. Uh, no, no dipstick, there's no other way to check it. This is the only way that you know you have the right amount of fluid in the transmission. So back under here. Yeah, it's, it's really dripping now, so it just took a minute to catch up and thread that bolt back in. And then, I think this one has a slightly different torque spec, but I, I just usually torque it to about 35, the same as the other one. And then I'll wipe up all the excess. So that's really everything. Uh, all I have to do now is clean up. I usually spray a little uh, 303 protectant on all the rubber parts. I'll just uh, wipe this down really well before I put it back. I have had problems with this plug uh, shrinking before and popping out. There's also a little check valve on top of the, not a check valve, like a, uh, like a vent on top of the transmission. And if that gets clogged, it will cause this to pop out. So I, I check and clean that. I'll probably do a much shorter, hopefully more organized video on that. Uh, just put this back in. Uh, putting everything up is uh, just the reverse of taking it down. Uh, I know I'm not going to win any uh, prizes for production value on this video, but hopefully it got the information across and will be helpful to somebody. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.